Okay, now we have audio. We'll get it one. We're gonna get it off the hop. So good. All right. Do I have to press play to see live comments? We'll see. Anyway, we're gonna get it. We're gonna nail it one of these days. Uh, thank you for your patience. Welcome to another episode of Till the Last Drop. I said it already, but the microphone was muted, so I'm gonna say it again and make all the same jokes and try to act just as funny. I was talking about the fact that you might hear a raindrop coming through the hole in my ceiling over there. <laughs> There's footage of me on Instagram somewhere where I'm just cutting into my ceiling with a drywall saw because I noticed like a slight discoloration. When I bought the place, you could tell there was like a part of the ceiling that was patched. And I asked the guy that sold it to me, I'm like, hey man, was that repaired? He's like, yeah, it was repaired. And then I noticed it like just kind of got like a weird color and then it got weirder. And then we painted the place and the paint just never really dried. And then eventually I was like, why is it soft? I just have a pole in my ceiling. It's been there for a, for a minute. That's okay. It's okay. It's not a priority. It's my unit. It's where I live. Got to make sure that everything else in the house where other people are is taken care of first. Doesn't matter. Here we are. Thanks for being here. Kickstart Films. I have your real name now. You sent me an, an amazing email. Thank you so much. Because We talked about bar stories and you actually followed through and just sent me a bunch of great ones. So I'm going to read through a couple of them because I read your email when I was like pretty tired and I don't remember much of it. You know, when you read stuff and you're not actually quite there, that was me. But I'm not going to use your real name. So if it's cool with you, I'm just going to uh, refer to you as Kickstart Films, unless you're comfortable with me revealing your, your first name. Whatever, just let me know. So good. Yeah, Francois, stop messing with the audio. He's always, he's such a little crap disturber. For sanity. Okay, and is it Reba or Reba? I think it's Reba. I'm going to assume it's Reba, but just correct me if I'm wrong. Martin Bland just showed up. Martin Bland. Hello, sir. What a beautiful, beautiful human. Nice to see you here. How are you? Are you enjoying the rainy weather? It's, it's pouring so much. In the other room, we have special guests today. They're not going to be on camera. They can just chill in the, uh, in the back office of the bar. But there is a cat who you saw on the last live. There is space back there. Producer extraordinaire. Huh? <laughs> I'm looking at him, looking at you, looking at me, looking at him. It doesn't matter. It's like very, very uh, inception in here. And then there is Coda. But I don't know how to show you Coda. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to let him chill. He's laying right here. Maybe we'll introduce him. An upcoming live. He's adorable. He is part... Oh my God, he's, he's part Malamute and German Shepherd. Why did I say Husky? Doesn't matter. He's something. He's a dog. He's a big old dog. Don't have to overcomplicate the wheel here. This phone isn't in frame if I leave it over here, right? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Thank you for being here. It's raining cats and dogs. That's where I was going with that. It's raining so much today. The window is open and I could hear the rain. I love the sound of rain. I just, that's not how rain sounds at all, but it was just, coming down and I was like wow it's really raining like I should probably have cleaned my gutters house things I didn't and so it was just this nice cascading waterfall right by the window and then it started coming into the window and then I noticed I had a power bar by said window so crisis averted nobody got electrocuted we moved the power bar on top of the fridge cleaned up the water everything's fine but we're a little bit late to the live because I'm not great at preparing as much as I should in the days leading up to these things. I leave a lot of stuff to the last second. Forgive me. It's been a bit of a hectic week. Here we are. The bathroom's finished. Remind me to tell you about the bathroom being finished. I'm going to take a breath. I don't know where Francois is. I haven't actually seen Francois today, so that's fine. Uh, Reba, I'm going to go through some of these emails, some of these emails, some of these stories, because just brilliant. And then I will address, so we'll, let's do question and answers at the end, because I know that the last time that worked really well, we'd like, let me spiral into chaos a little bit. And then we came back the Q and a Q&A session at the end. I'm seeing Olin's music asking about a lemon drop martini. Can I make you one? I absolutely can. I just need to see some ID. Cool. Okay. Let's, let's just open up this email because I have it ready. Bar stories that I will likely read on the live and or use as fodder for future skits and scripts. Please email me them to the email that I will include in a comment. We'll pin it in a second, but the email is barstories at thekazam.com. Barstories at thekazam.com. Reba emailed me some 14 days ago after our first 
stream, which I counted as episode 000 because the first 15 minutes were muted audio. But let's go through it. So Reba, as far as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, you are at a movie theater. I think you're at a movie theater, like bar slash concession stand. And okay, I'm gonna jump into one that just like caught my eye because this, I actually have a funny story for this one. So one of the points in your email is arguing about how to pronounce different types of liquor like or blue curacao. So, oh, so good. I'm gonna talk about blue curacao. So for those of you who may not know what blue curacao is, blue curacao is, you've probably seen it, but it's most popularly produced, I would say, in North America by two countries, Bols and McGinnis. If you're gonna see Blue Curacao, it's likely one of those two companies. Maybe there's other ones in the States that I just don't know of, but I just, I'll just speak to Canada. Where I'm at in Ontario, those two companies like own the market when it comes to the production and distribution of Blue Curacao. And Curacao, I, I don't even wanna fast track this story because it's such a good one. Let's rewind, okay? I'm working my first ever bartending gig in Niagara Falls at a restaurant and bar called Planet Hollywood. To give you some context, Planet Hollywood was a franchise of restaurants that were started and sort of co-owned for a while by a bunch of celebrities. Demi Moore, I believe was part of the group, Bruce Willis, Sylvester Stallone. There was like, there were some names that were part of that organization. There was, and I think there might still be, or it shut down now, I don't really know, but I know there was one for sure in Hollywood, in New York City, there was one here in Niagara Falls, but they had this Planet Hollywood franchise. I worked for this Niagara Falls building as, as my first ever bartending gig. We're flashing back to like 2013. I'm working with this bartender and we won't name this person. I'm, I'm sure she's she's doing well and I, I wish her not, nothing but the best. We're going to just, we're gonna name her C. We'll call her C. And she's training me. It was my, I think it was my first or second shift in the building. So like I've done a course through a Toronto organization called the Toronto Institute of Bartending. It was like a three day course to just try to learn the ropes of bartending and bottle service or understanding like like procedure not bottle service but but you know the you know order of operations how to prioritize tasks how to actually mix drinks basic cocktail structure and technique stuff i get there and i'm i'm in my second training shift and i'm shadowing the this this person who shall remain nameless and a couple sits down at the bar the restaurant's mainly empty it's perfect i'm feeling like i'm finally like understanding like, okay, this is, this is it. I had worked in restaurants and bars from a young age doing close-up magic, but never on the serving side up until that point, never on the, the, the bartender side. So I'm behind the bar with C and a couple comes in and they sit down. Beautiful, beautiful couple, probably like mid thirties to mid forties. The male was probably mid forties. This like, I'd say like five foot 10 or like almost six foot and like built like a brick house black man and his partner, I'm assuming wife or girlfriend, like as a mid thirties at that point, Caucasian, gorgeous, brown hair, both of them smiling, laughing, like just like warm, you know, like warm, nice people. You just tell like they were just vacationing, they were traveling. He had a cool accent. She sounded North American, whatever. We're making do, building rapport. Here's your food, here's your drinks, the typical, structure, the typical experience of a bar. Made atypical probably by yours truly because, you know, eccentric eccentricities abound. So they order their food, they get their food, they order drinks and sees serving them all this different stuff and, and upselling them. And she was a master at, at the sales part and the, the business side of, of serving. At one point, the gentleman asked her about what was in the one drink that, that C made for his partner. And she started lifting, listing off the ingredients and then came to Blue Curacao. As a quick aside, because we're talking about it, but if you're not aware of what it is, it's basically just a sweet orange flavored liqueur. It's used a lot in, I would say it got its popularity in the 90s, like, like mid to late 90s. Bulls actually came up with this brilliant idea where they put 
Blue Curacao into a bottle. They, they redesigned their bottle to look like a juggling pin. And it was for flair bartenders to actually just promote the use of their product more. And they tried to kind of get a grip on the market with this cool bottle that, that looked like one of these. It literally is, to this day, the, the bottle shape, the neck isn't as long, but the, the shape of the bottle is, is very similar to this. That was handy. Thank you for having ADHD. You're welcome. Stocks of juggling pins are here. This is literally where I pulled that from, just for context. I just to torch it, more juggling pants. Anyways, so they have this bottle, right? And it's it's meant for flare bartenders. In bartending, like flare bartending, you hold the bottles like this, so you would juggle bottles like this as a flare bartender. You don't hold them like a juggler would, which is like this. And so Bolsa's whole idea was, I'm going to make this cool bottle that bartenders can throw around and catch and spin and do things with, and, and that'll get guest attention. Cool, okay, great. Marketing 101 with bulls, stay, stay, good club. She gets to blue and she says, oh, I just made you a blue lagoon. It's Sprite, vodka, doo doo doo, blah, 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 and blue Caraca. I, I just, I bit my tongue. Reba, I believe spelled it correctly. I'm just, I'm gonna make sure I don't misspell it by speaking it out loud, but I can't find it now. Curacao, C-U-R-A-C-A-O, C-U-R-A-C-A-O, yeah. And the second C has a CD on it, which is the French word for the little accent, little little tail under the C. So it's sal. And C, that's a lot of, that's really confusing. We can just call her Sarah. Her name's not Sarah. We can just call her Sarah, whatever. But but this this person I'm shadowing, C, goes, oh, yeah, Blue Lagoon is this, 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 and Blue Caraco. And I bite my tongue. I see the black guy at the bar, kind of give her one of these, you know, like the, the tilting of the head look. The white girl that he's with, doesn't know any different. She doesn't, she doesn't react. But like, I look at the black guy, the black guy looks at me. We have that moment of like, but I don't say anything. It's my second shift. It's my second time meeting this person that I'm shadowing. I'm just, you know, hands behind my back and like, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Of course. Yes, absolutely. Yep. I'll go grab that. Yep. Okay, cool. That's, that's how much I put in there. Okay, great. Oh, that's called shaking. Great. Cool. The experience went on from there without exaggeration for some reason or another the word corral came up at least half a dozen more times in a very short amount of time. The guests were kind of done their dinner and their experience at this point. I say dinner, early dinner, late lunch, whatever. They're, they're kind of on their way out. But for some reason, whether it was the guy picking on the fact that it had been pronounced Caraco, which in hindsight is probably what he was doing, or it was just this bartender that I was shadowing, like doubling down on you know, her knowledge of cocktails and of recipes and of ingredients. She just kept saying it over and over and over. Blue Caraco, Blue Caraco. And every time it's like, just like someone's taking a knife and just like stabbing into my skull. And I'm, I'm usually pretty forgiving of people mispronouncing stuff. I mispronounce things all the time. It's fine. It was just the amount of times in quick succession that Blue Caraco, and I, because I'm new, I don't want to be that guy that's like, it's pronounced I just take it, whatever. It's fine. And you know, we enjoy it. And the guests are laughing. Everyone's having a good time. She's making great rapport. I'm observing. I'm shadowing. It's great. The couple goes to leave and ask for their bill. They pay their bill and they either didn't tip. I think they didn't tip or they tipped very little. And C, the person that I'm shadowing, who is this invisible hand palm face puppet that I've created here, because she was about this tall. Brazen, short little thing, a little shoddy, but she had boom, she had character. She had that, that, that chutzpah, you know, that like, she didn't care if, if you did something wrong or if you upset her or if you were in the wrong, didn't matter if you were a manager, a guest, a fellow bartender, she would just call you out on it. I kind of respect it. They pay, they tap, or they swipe their card, whatever it was. And I, I'm not that old that it wasn't like, it was like some updated thing, whatever. And they start walking out of the building. C can't go this way because we're, we're, the way the bar was designed, the exit was this way, but it was this giant bar. The only access point was to our right, your left. And so she has to, it's just comical. This like little, little, I don't know, like five foot, what is that? Five foot six person, like running out this way. And you just, just see like her little legs, just like, like stumbling around and then back catches up to the couple as they're basically like about to start their descent down the stairs to exit out onto what is 
the front of Clifton Hill. And she goes, excuse me, excuse me, guys, 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 did I do something wrong? Like, did I upset you? Because this is my living and like, like this, I, 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 I rely on tips to blah, blah, blah. And she, I'm making her sound like a lot nicer. The truth is she was a, a not a great person uh, a lot of the time, like just kind of a bully. I'm making her out to be a, a nicer person, but um, she, she could be a little bit of a bully, a little bit mean, um, just a bit of a bitch, you know, didn't want to say it. I'm saying it. Well, what did I do wrong? Did I upset you? And the gentleman, picture this guy, right? Stark, just black, built like, like just thick, not very tall, but like, like me, like a little shorter than me, maybe. So, so tallish, but just like charismatic, present, strong, and, and grounded. And in this like cool accent that I don't want to try to imitate, but for like the drama of it, I'm going to do my best to, to honor this man's accent. When she says, did I do something wrong? Like, why didn't you tip me? He replies, no, everything was great, but I am from the island of Curaçao and you upset me. I have never seen someone's whole face, being, mannerisms, and just existence change slash shatter that fast. I am from the island of Curaçao. Like, I will never forget the words this guy spoke and how he spoke them to her basically saying, yo, you dumb bitch, all high and mighty about this and that knowledge. We can see you bullying this new kid because he's shadowing you and you're kind of like acting like everything's perfect and like you know everything, ordering him around to do stuff that you don't want to do, being sure with him, being nice to us. We see it all. And he just, in one sentence, just like put, it had nothing to do with the pronunciation of Curaçao. That guy was cool enough that he would have let it slide. But what I realized is that man saw the experience difference for them, the server voice, if you will, that she was putting on, the persona she was putting on versus how she was talking to me and other staff. And in one sentence, not only just kind of shafted her on the tip, but in one sentence made it impossible for her to come up with some clever excuse or reason or apology. It's like, no, this is my home. This is where I'm from. Learn how to pronounce it. Get off your high horse. Enough with the hubris. No more ego. I am from the island of Curaçao. If I ever meet that guy, if I ever see him again, I'm just going to give him the biggest hug because it's one of my favorite stories. He was so calm, so diplomatic, so cool and collected the whole experience. But for some reason, at the end, he just, he just, he just laid it out. Much like she would have, you know? She would have just laid it out, which I kind of respect. And so she got a taste of her medicine. He got a taste of what it is to just be informed and know how to pronounce stuff. And this like nerdy, weird, eccentric white guy just like trying not to snicker, just like biting my tongue so hard because it was my second shift. Ha, huh. Reba, thank you for that story. Wow. It's like so good. We won't get into Cavassier today because my brain's melted after sharing the, uh, after sharing the experience of that. But I'm going to jump back into there for a minute because I don't even know where to go from there. Like, I don't know where to transition from there. This is, this is one of those good moments. Space is the producer extraordinaire. He's over there. I think if I had done a better job planning, it's like improvised story time and then cut to pre-recorded cool thing that or like a clip from the Tobermory trip or something. That'd be cool, eh? Like showing the different like long form videos that are going up through the week. And then in the live, I have something to refer to like, by the way, if you missed it, here's a recap of what we did this week. Eh, whatever. We'll get better. It's only the, the we're going to say the second one. Okay, the first one didn't count. Last week we were on the road. So really it's the first one, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about you, but I like that. That's, that's I should have a little, a little, uh, I have my book, but I left it over there. A little thing to write that down, you know, blah, blah, blah. I should do this because in my tick tick, I really should get sponsored by these guys. It came up in the first stream. In my tick tick, I put, I'll, I'll open it for you. Just so you know, I'm not lying. Tick tick. It's a great app. I have a note section called live stream and I have actually, it's called live stream improvements. Look at that live stream improvements and how to improve pacing and break up parenthesis pattern interrupt visuals. That's how, because when you tell a story, you know, some juggling, blah, 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 cool. That was fun. That was nice. 
But eventually, it's going to be like, yo, have something to cut to. We're going to make this show great. One show at a time. All right. I'm going to jump into the comments for a little bit. Uh, Kat had surgery Monday. It went well. Some of you messaged me and asked me, and we'll address it here as well. If you see Kat in the next couple of videos, she is recovering. She is in discomfort and uh, in pain, which is not fun, but, uh, but recovering and surgery. I think it went well, right? Like, no, nothing to report. That's always, that's good. So we're, we're grateful for that. Kukaracha sounding pronunciation. Yeah. Blue Caraco. Yeah, and then I just put some blue Caraco. Oh my goodness. Movie theater manager. Okay, started as a bartender and promoted up. Cool. Got it. Oh, that's awesome. Kavaswa. I kind of want to pronounce it Kavaswa from now on. I pronounced Kavassier as Kavaswa for like two years before someone corrected me. Still refuse to believe the pronunciation for a freshene being what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder if these people are just making it up, you know? Like, okay, go with me on this. The only defense I have for fre is Chinese Mandarin, thank you, is Shishini, right? I think, spelled X-I-E, X-I-E, and then N-I, but, but the, the Xie is X-I-E. So I'm like, maybe, but then if you like look at Spanish and like Waka, the, the, the mothership, the birthplace, the Mecca of Mezcal. Haka is O-A-X-A-C-A, -A -A, but that would make Freshene. Anyway, it's fine. I feel like it's just good branding, right? Like, did you know this? The number seven on a Jack Daniels bottle, there was myths about all the different reasons the number seven exists on the Jack Daniels bottles. It was how many kids Jack Daniels had. It was how many times Jack Daniels got arrested. It was how many wives he had. Nope. The number seven on the Jack Daniels bottle is actually just that. It's a number seven on a Jack Daniels bottle. There is no rhyme or reason to it. It was just chosen for marketing. People tend to associate luck with a number seven and it's just something that people can talk about and it just adds story to the brand. But there's no reason for it. So sometimes I look at these different products, these different things. I'm looking at like Buffalo Trace. Like why? Like every every single thing on here, right? The the rocks tequila. Every single thing on this bottle is chosen. It's not by accident, right? Everything. Every decision. Every from the way they cut out around the buffalo. Like it, it just fascinates me. Like there's teams of people that will just sit there and creative and just come up with everything on this. And we tend to walk by it. We get bombarded with like tens of thousands of these things daily, whether it's because we're in a store and we're seeing all the products, whether it's the ads when we're doom scrolling. But it's kind of neat to think about that there's literal offices dedicated to people that decide on the creative to try and make you choose this bottle over the tequila next to it. Like, I, I don't know, I just, I kind of, I find that kind of fascinating. That's it. That's that. We're doing a live stream till the last drop. Oh. Eventually, there will be flow. There will be more. What's the word? It's here. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. There will be more of a sense of, yeah, I think flow is a good one. Structure, maybe a little bit of structure, a little bit more flow, and we'll keep going. But I, I like that we committed to these Sundays. I kind of like the Sunday vibe. It's raining. It's cloudy. I haven't even had a coffee yet. This is me sans coffee. Ridiculous. Sans. That's another one. Why did I just use that word? Don't know. I love French. It's so, it's just so fun. Speaking of French, where is Frenchie? You guys haven't seen him, eh? He's not over there? Okay. Sometimes he hides and he just like pops out of nowhere and you're just like, what are you doing, bro? All right. I don't know where he is, but it's fine. He might just be doing his thing. New videos up. I posted a short at 11 a.m. ish today and I had a lot of fun with it. I realized that everything is just a repeat of everything else. Basically, if you look at Commedia dell'arte and the archetypical characters in Commedia, and then you look at any popular sitcom, TV show, movie from the last however long, they're all there. All the characters from Commedia dell'arte are in those things that you likely enjoy, I enjoy, etc. So I was doing this breakdown, I had this huge aha moment, realizing that Commedia, which as an aside, in case you haven't heard that term, Commedia dell'arte is... I want to say it's like from the 1500s. Someone can correct me on that, but it's old. It's old as the hills. It's an old Italian art form where 
live troops, usually traveling troops, would do these sketches and skits and these short plays. And the reason that they worked is that they had different gags and different jokes that they could come back to. The Lazi, but they're pranks or gags or jokes that these misfits, this cast of characters, could pull off together. So there was like Dottore, who's the doctor, not Doctor Who necessarily, but if you listen even to that, the archetype of Dottore was in Commedia way before Doctor Who was even on TV. Kind of like neat to think about. There is Il Capitano, the captain, Pantalones, which is like pants, and then there's Arlecchino, which is Harlequin, aka Harley Quinn in the Batman universe. Like there's just a lot of correlation between Commedia and everything fiction. And I realized, oh, I naturally started to take those archetypes in the little skits that I was doing. And then I just assigned all the different Commedia archetypes to the characters that were in my videos. And I realized there was space for a new one. And so I introduced him in the video that I posted today. His name is Chappie. And he's like, uh, he's a weird one. In Cheers, if you ever watch Cheers, the equivalent would be Harry the Hat. And Chappie is kind of a tip of the hat, pardon the pun, to the character Harry the Hat, who is played by Harry Anderson, super talented magician and entertainer and actor who comes into the Cheers environment in that universe. And he's always got like little barbets or magic tricks that he does for the characters of Cheers. And Harry Anderson in real life was a super talented magician. So I was like, man, I've spent how many years doing magic? It would probably make sense to introduce like a sly little, excuse me, sly little character or, you know, not nefarious, but just a little, uh, what's the word? He's just, he's cunning, he's conniving, he's like, I'm still trying to find his voice. I'm not sure what he's going to sound like. The, I, I'm debating posting, I'm gonna to talk to Space about this. Remind me, Space, to check in with you on this. The full edit of the video was like a minute 30. And then I was like, let's cut this down to make it a short. And then I did. So now it's like 59 seconds, but I might post the full, like longer cut. If you want me to do that, let me know. But I have it. I have it, might as well use it and put it up because I think there is some some moments of dialogue that I kind of like, but Chappie and Chappie, C-H-A-P-P-Y, nothing to do with the movie because I don't really remember watching the movie. I probably should, but I, I think I did, but I don't remember it. So it's uh, C-H-A-P-P-Y because of a, another magician whose name is Chappie Brazil. And Chappie Brazil was one of the first people to, on camera, as far as I know, one of the first people to prove that you could steal a expanding metal band wristwatch off of someone's wrist, that it didn't have to be a leather band watch. So there is a book that a lot of people refer to when they're trying to learn the theatrical art of pickpocketing, which is called Jim Ravel's Theatrical Art of Pickpocketing. But in it, he's like, metal expansion watches cannot be stolen. The only watches that can be stolen are, are watches that, that can come off the wrist this way. And Chappie Brazil, Vegas magician, as far as I'm, I'm aware, I'm not sure if he was born there, or if he moved there, but he, he's like, actually, I'm going to show you that it is completely possible to steal a watch this way. And he released a, I think it was VHS at that point, might've been DVD, but a, a collection called Chappie Brazil's watch stealing videos, where he just teaches you how to steal watches. And that was one of the first video lessons or, or video courses I ever had access to, to learn the art of stealing a watch off a person's wrist. And unfortunately, Chappie was a motorcyclist. He was riding around in Vegas. A cop blew through a light and killed him like on the spot. It was kind of horrific. So rest in peace, Chappie. This was some years ago, but nevertheless, it's just, uh, just a tragic loss for like such a cool character. Like I remember watching the footage of him taking a Rolex off a guy's wrist. And as luck would have it, the first watch that I ever stole off someone's wrist was a Rolex and it was thanks to Chappie. And I didn't, I didn't realize it was a Rolex. I probably would have been a lot less cool about it. I would have stumbled a lot more if I knew the brand of the watch. Talk about good marketing, but it's, it's his video that let me learn the art of stealing watches. So I wanted to include a character that was kind of a tip of the hat to Harry Anderson's character in Cheers, but also to Chappie Brazil. And I thought, what better way than to call him Chappie because 
it's kind of a fun name too. And I think Chappie's like this, like, he's kind of like, I don't know if he's Bronxish or Jersey or where he's from. He, he's like, you could just picture him like throwing three card Monty or Coda, stop sighing. I'm almost done talking. He doesn't like when he's not the center of attention. He's just laying here. <laughs> he's big, deep breathing, laying here on the floor. It's fine. I should introduce you to him. We will in a future live when I'm not restricted by the bar space. And also, I probably shouldn't have footage of a dog in the bar environment just in case health inspection ever watches these tapes back. Because you know they're going to. And they're going to get you. They're always out to get you. Those damn health inspectors. New videos up. That was the point of that story. I think that's it. I'm going to go through some Q&A. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to see more of, I drop them in the chat. There's some people here watching and enjoying and thank you for being here. I don't want to take up too much of your time because I respect your time and I appreciate you being here very much. So let's just jump to it. Drop some questions, drop some comments. Let me know where you're watching from. If you don't have anything to say, then just tell me what you're up to or where you're from. I'm always curious to know like who's here? What are you guys up to? And Bellatrix, can you tell me what you were referring to when you dropped that comment? You said, I thought it was how long it was distilled for. I don't remember which part of what I was talking about that applies to. I tend to go through a lot. So I'm sorry. Let me know what you meant so I can go back and, and address that. That'd be great. Then, oh, how long it was distilled for? The number seven on the bottle. Yeah. No. Nope. Nope. If, if I'm completely wrong, please let me know and I'll, I'll go Google it. But as far as I'm concerned, it's just random. And like, I agree with you because like sometimes, especially with bourbons and, and whiskeys, I don't know if I have any that I could refer to for what you're saying, but I know exactly what you mean. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. So, okay. This one doesn't have it. That's okay. But I know that some versions of the JP Weisers will have the the different amount of years so like and definitely rums rums tend to have it a lot i don't have any rum bottles except for the overproof which won't have it on there but yeah it'll say like three year or seven year five year when we were in nicaragua the rum down there is flor de caña which if you haven't tried it, it's a nicaraguan rum delicious flor de caña has they're like one year three year five year seven year and then it goes on from there. There's like 25 years. I'm sure there's 50s. But uh, yeah, I know the number seven is just it's just a random number. And now when you picture like, I, I can just picture so many brands that were inspired by Jack Daniels that have like lucky brand number seven or like even just the, the font is very reminiscent of the Jack Daniels font. It's kind of neat to think about just how much tie in there is between things. Phoenix, Arizona. That's awesome. I don't think I knew that Reba that you're in Phoenix. That's cool. Your favorite story that you sent me thus far, man, they're all pretty good. You know what? That's a great, let's, let's wrap on that because there are some good ones there. Oh man, Reba, I don't even want, I, I should read through these, but I, I want to, I want to keep some of them for future ones to refer back to, but critically awful alcoholic was really good at pretending to be sober in front of the bartender until he eventually passed out in a bathroom is probably up there on the list. Like you sent me that as as exactly how I read it, critically awful alcoholic was really good at pretending to be sober in front of the bartender until he later passed out in the bathroom. I mean, you could just picture that, right? Like it's 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 comic and funny in this context. Like we can find the light of it, but if we cast the spotlight onto like the deeper issue, it's also weirdly tragic and sort of sad that alcohol is such a potent drug and when people build up a tolerance to it, they can, okay, all right, story time. Thanks for reminding me, Reba. Same restaurant as this live stream began at, so Planet Hollywood, but some months later when I was now serving alone, bartending alone, etc., I'm serving this table, and it turns out that the woman at the table is an OPP officer. And similar to what you just asked, I said, what what have been some of the most interesting interactions you've had lately? Is there anything you can tell me without, nothing too gruesome or, or weird, but what what's something that, that you've come across lately? And she said that she pulled a guy over because one of his tail lights was out and he was on a dark country road. She was from somewhere in Ontario, but like smaller town vibes. So her, her job is mainly like highway patrol and just making sure people are safe on the roads. Okay, cool. Pulled him over for a, a broken tail light. I don't know why I'm mimicking and miming a tail light. It's not like, like, like this is not the shape of a, a tail light, but it's fine. It'd be cool if they were this shape. Could you imagine? Which brand of car is that? 
That's another thing, eh? Marketing. You can tell a car brand by the taillights or the headlights. Like, crazy, crazy. Pulls him over, gets him out of the car because he was driving fine, he wasn't speeding, he wasn't swerving, but gets him out of the car just because of the smell of alcohol when he rolled down the window. And this guy, she breathalyzed him, and he blew two and a half times the legal limit. And like for perspective's sake, if the legal limit is 0.08, two and a half times, like that's, like you're drunk. Like that's, that's a lot of booze. But all the field sobriety tests she did with him, totally fine. No slurring, no swaying. He was just human who was being very polite about his broken taillight. Yes, officer. Thank you, officer. Sure, I can step out of the vehicle, officer. And blew two and a half times the limit. So to your story, Reba, I think it's very, very fascinating, the like physiological and psychological effects of alcohol. I remember when I was drinking, there were moments where I would be totally fine and like, I can remember the conversations. I can give you precise details of interactions. I might have been like more socially loose, right? I mean, that's that's what I think I used that drug for is like the, the, the feeling of just like relaxing and like being less in my head. And I would get home. And the second I was, it has to do with like the safeness of space, I think. And I think like when you said bathroom, like this person would go pass out on the bathroom. It's kind of interesting because I think it's kind of correlates to what I'm about to say, where the second I stepped into a safe space, like a space that was familiar to me or known to me, everything from that point on, I just blacked out on. I didn't remember a thing. Like it was just not real. It was like a different reality. It was like a different dimension. And so it's kind of interesting to think about that because with this guy, it's probably... A similar thing where like with the bartender very good at like pretending to be like you know totally okay and fine and with it but then the second they're in like a space that's you know private and i would hope safe i would hope the bathrooms are safe just passed out it's just it's just a weird like part of the survival brain like kicking in so yeah it's probably probably one of my favorites just because i just it is kind of funny to picture though right like just the the black and white of it of like and then it's just just ridiculous. I just, I love contrast. I think contrast is what makes comedy comedy because without contrast, we don't have comedy. And that's it. That's that. What else? Story time. Always story time. It was so sad. I figured comedy potential two and a half is darn close to lethal too. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even know what lethal is. And, and she, I remember her mentioning that too. The detective said that I'm surprised he wasn't dead and like, yeah, fair point. And new question, which cocktails seem to be your most popular wherever you went? Great question. I'll give you two answers, a pragmatic one and one that I think will serve young bartenders and people in the industry because I think that that's why we're here through dialogue like this. Like, why not do something that will help others in the future? So which cocktail, see, what was the wording? Seem to serve, seem to be most popular. So pragmatic, most practical answer I can give you, which cocktail was the most popular? It's tough. Because of where I am, three come to mind. The Caesar, just because I think it's much like a mojito, which is number two on the list. Caesars and mojitos were definitely like just so powerful. Talking about visual branding, people see them. And in my circle of industry friends, we call it the Caesar train or the mojito train. I'm sure you have a similar like wording, but when they see a Caesar go out, which up in Canada, I need to remember that. In the States, they're kind of catching on, but up in Canada, Caesars are super popular because they're basically a Bloody Mary they were invented in the 70s here in Canada, but we use, or, or the bartender that invented them used a juice mix. It was a mix of clam juice and tomato juice. Now it's a company, or maybe it was already a company. Don't, don't quote me on any of this because I don't know the history well enough, but Mott's Clamato. So Mott's is the, the umbrella corporation, and then they have a product called Clamato, which is clam and tomato juice mixed into one word, Clamato juice. And we use it to make Caesars, which is essentially... Bloody Mary, just with this this Clamato juice. So vodka, Clamato. How do you pronounce Worcestershire? 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 I can't. I'm gonna make a. It's probably gonna be a two and a half to three and a half minute sketch video, and I'm really excited about it. And I'm I'm telling you about it now because this way it'll be like accountability. I have to do it. I want to do like an Apocalypse Now inspired comedy sketch about characters arguing about the pronunciation of Worsh. What man? Zach, who was in the last stream, is Welsh. So like from the UK and he taught me 
and I still don't remember. And he would be devastated that I don't know because it's just, it's just too many letters. It's just, why, why, why is there an X in Freshene? Same, same question, different story. What, what are what, what are you, whatever, that sauce. Uh, Tabasco, typically salt, pepper. Some people put horseradish, some people do pickle juice. I put an ounce of orange juice in mine. I know, judge me until you try it. Do it in a Bloody Mary, same thing, delicious. So Caesars, mojitos, and I don't know. I don't know, I, I, I thought I had a third one, but, but then it shifts as I change location. I would say either Cosmo, Cosmos are still freaking popular, or espresso martinis. People still love espresso martinis. So like, I would say those four, but that's like a practical, very like just standard answer. The truth is, I think if I was a different person, if I was a better bartender in X or Y ways, if I was black, not Caucasian, like just how I appear, if I was born in a different time period, if I was an older bartender, and if I was bartending in different places, Hey, look, he's sniffing the juggling clubs. I might, I might put him on camera. It's Coda, the big dog I'm talking about. I want to just pick him up, but I, I'm not going to. Come here. Can you stand up for a sec? Just come say hi for a sec. Oh, look. He's massive. He's massive. Good boy. I think if I was a different bartender, those answers would be completely different. So I think the cocktails that's, that were most popular for customers, rewinding in real time, I believe the cocktails that were most popular for customers depend largely on who I am and how I present as a bartender because I like to guide guests through an experience rather than just letting them look at a menu and making their choices. That's great if you're busy, but I think that people are going out to eat and drink because they want to be served an experience. They can get food and booze in a grocery store now. So it's my job to kind of carry them along and guide them through that experience of dining or drinking, whatever. Thus, that was a big sigh. Thus, that's why I think the answers are what they are. But I think the less practical answer is learn what you're passionate about. I love tequila. I love mezcal. I love the history of Mexico, of Mayan culture, of Aztec culture. All of that fascinates me. And thus, I, I like to learn about like, why did this start? How did this start? What, what is with these big pits of fire in the ground. What, what is agave? What, you're telling me you can make booze from a cactus? What, how does that work? I think because I was naturally curious about Latin American culture, about the history of that specific alcohol, I tended to sell and serve a lot of tequila and mezcal based cocktails. So there's an answer. I can say the best cocktail of time that I implore you to try is Mezcal, Chinar, and we use, oh my God, I'm blanking, Coqui, Coqui Americano, the dark stuff. Yeah, the, the sweet, not the, not the dry. Yeah, Coqui, Chinar, Mezcal, equal parts. It's basically a Negroni, but Mezcal-based Negroni. Try it if you have the ingredients. You won't regret it, or just drink water. That's, that's good too. Okay. It's getting warm in here. The dog's panting. We're gonna go for a walk. I need a coffee. And we're heading to Rock Point Conservation Area. We're gonna go camping for two days and see how that goes with Cat's shoulder, a 375 pound dog. I'm kidding. He's like barely 200 pounds. It's fine. And space, look at that. Huh? Like the good old days. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find photos and video. We, we did this same trip like 2019, 2020? I think. Yeah, around there. And we're, now we're going back. So here we go. Yeah. And Gnevko, I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. Which time as a bartender would you choose? Oh, which, like which era to bartend in? That's, that's a great question. I think that's what you mean. I'm not sure, but correct me if I'm wrong. Which time as a bartender would you choose? Which time? Man, I don't know. I, I think there is something really magical about the, the scene just as it is right now. I will say though, I wish that Canada jumped onto fresh juices faster. Like we, I'll put it this way. Airports were serving cocktails with fresh squeezed lemon and lime juice in them before most of Canada, I say airports, international airports, specifically the United States, because that's what I think the United States tend to deem themselves as being considered, which is an, an international space because you guys are just, you guys lead 
the, the, the parade and a lot of stuff. But you could get a cocktail with fresh squeezed lime juice, for example, a mojito in an airport where it's like hard to get ingredients and supplies to. Where in Canada, like everyone was still using like the like disgusting, like fluorescent green powdered garbage that could survive nuclear war. Ugh, no bueno. So I would say anytime after fresh juices were introduced is a good one. Yeah. It's just a present, you know, it's fine. Where we're at is fine. But it would have also been really cool to bartend in like the fluorescent like neon scene of the 80s to like mid 90s like club and like quick, fast, expedited cocktail culture. Like just everything was like, like go, go, go. Like I, I have friends that are older than me that told me stories of in their prime, the just the one guy did the math once and he was putting out 12 mixed drinks every five seconds on a Friday or Saturday night where he worked 12 mixed drinks every five seconds. Like how's that, how's that even possible? If you count poor, like, you know, bah, 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 and you're just like, like that's like, it's fast. Like, especially as like a speed spout, you know, poor two, three, four, bounce, two, three, four, bah, bah, bah. You're just like, right? Maybe you're under pouring them because it's Friday and Saturday night, under poor Fridays in support of industry Mondays. I don't know. This has been Till the Last Drop, episode three, but really episode one, because we were not counting the last two. I'm just gonna keep saying it. it's gonna be the running gag for the next 6,500 episodes. Thank you for watching Till the Last Drop. We'll see you in the next one. We're gonna cue some outro scenes and some music. Like we're on this now. Space is in the building. He's producing it real time. I'm still here. The song is playing. I'm going. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment, let me know what you wanna see next time. And I'm gonna just keep making content because I have no other choice. I love doing it. I love making these weird shorts and skits and films and getting to interact with you guys. It's like, honestly, the highlight of my week. So this is like, I realize why we're doing this space. I get it, Cat. I get it. It's a nice way to intro what the next week will be. And it's a cool way to be excited for something. Temporal landmarks. Temporal landmarks, temporal lobe, temporal, whatever, T-E-M-P-O-R-A-L. This whole episode has been about spelling, sponsored by the letter Q. Imagine I just pulled up a letter Q that I had. That'd be cool. I don't, it's just a bar stool. It's fine though. Thanks for watching. I gotta go polish glass with it. Stay magical, thanks for believing, and we'll see you next time in an episode of Till the Last Drop. Bye bye. Status quo and remember the real magic's in you.